Good morning and welcome to Manor Farm Stables. My name is Danielle Baker and my father, Clifford Baker, is head lad for Paul Nichols. Today is Paul's owner's open day and I'd just like to give you all a warm welcome and hopefully I'll manage to get some inside information and some tips for the upcoming season. I feel like I should be bowing right now, stood outside Big Buck Stable, who is being a bit of a handful, Rose. Yes, he is. He's, um, he's loving all the attention. <laughs> He's just behaving a bit like a spoiled child. Well, he is so, only young, isn't he? It's still quite overwhelming yeah. for him. Well, it is. And they started up the music earlier on, and that oh, was God. it. That was his cue to run around the box. So. Well, normally when he gets this attention, he's on a race course, and he's about to go and yeah. do his thing. So I guess that's probably what he's thinking. Yeah. Relax. <laughs> we should take be out. used to it by now, because we do this every year. But he'll be fine. He always likes, likes to run around the box, so I have to hold on to him. Yeah. Likes to keep you on his toes. Yes, definitely. <laughs> So, Rose, if I didn't know him better, I think he was a bit needy. And I'm just thinking about it. I remember when he start, when he first came here, didn't he come over with a goat companion or something? Well, the story goes that the goat got as far as the ferry, but he wasn't allowed to travel because he didn't have a passport. So Bucks had to come over without his friend. So then, obviously, because he's so needy, Paul asked me to look after him, give him my full attention. So I suppose in one way you could say I've replaced his goat. <laughs> Well, at least you've got a passport. So. Yes. <laughs> well, this must be a really special day for you to sort of let the uh, owners come and see their horses, but everyone else's. Yeah, it's really good. It's a good day. We've built on it every year. We try and, you know, a great a parade, give them some lunch. Um, entertainment. Some entertainment. And, um, you know, you see it's been a fantastic day. And people like Mr. Hales, who won the national, make sure <laughs> they have a good day. <laughs> um, but we've, we've, you know, it's been a, it's something I think a lot of the owners enjoy is who once in the year get together. Every penny you spend on it, it's a yeah. great investment in my mind and um, you know we, we, we've always had sort of team ditch it's a bit of a club in which so everyone's yeah. part of it and, and share everyone's successes and team today it's been awesome yeah watching that Neptune Cologne wow. feature I mean that was fantastic and I saw so many tears in people's eyes it, it was an amazing video you know and the national is you know you, you, it's hard to explain beforehand until you win it and you, but it's just something different and that video today summed it all up Obviously, you've got another fantastic team going into this season. You just must be itching to get going. Yeah, you know, we keep saying October the 13th, but that's the first Chepstow meet is when we see the start of the season. We're looking forward to that. We've got lots of lots of young horses. Yeah. Um, really, really looking forward to it. Have you got more new horses and, and staff than usual? Or no, same similar? number. Probably got about 30, two or three new horses that weren't here last year. Obviously, a lot of the older horses um, have gone on. And Corto's... Um, you know, future we're waiting on a decision from Clive what he's going to do with him. Yeah. Um, so, you know, you have to look forward, not back. Basically, I think the plan is start riding him now, give him a month, six weeks work. Clifford knows him better than anybody and he can sort of say to me whatever I think. I can have a chat with Clive and we can discuss it, say where we are, what we think, and then Clive can make a decision whether he wants to run him again or not run him again. And whatever decision Clive's made will fully support him. And as you can imagine, obviously the only decision is the right decision. But you can see how he is at the moment. You know, he's mad fresh. Um, he's in good order. Month, six weeks down the line, we'll know exactly where we are with him. So that's Porto Star. Any sort of new youngsters that you're particularly looking for? I know that's a hard it, question. It's always a job. To, to, you never know till they... Put, whatever they do at home, you, it's what they do on the racetrack, the counts. And over the yeah. years, you think, oh, I've got a marvellous horse. He's won this point, the point of that, novice hurdle. Wow. But until they perform, you don't really know as to what you've got at home. There's a lot... And I'm not going to single any out, really, in particular. I, I like 4-2 big grey horses, a 3 old basically, because he's, he's, a, he's a chaser in the making. Yeah. Um, we have a lovely 3 old called Lac Fontana. Um, so lovely point to pointers, Capitals Hills one, yeah. Bucks Bond, and you could go on and on and on without mentioning any names. In you know the lovely lot of young horses. I've said I think there's 32 or three new ones. Well, I mean you've got a good team going forward, and hopefully that will stand you in good stead for winning the championship again. Uh, is that? Do you set out to win that every year, or is, does it come second? No one ever believes us. No, I mean we won it seven years, and we've been absolutely brilliant. And I sort of said to Clifford the other day, it's our magnificent seven. I think from now on it's going to be hard, and yeah. it's a new era, new generation. You know, if you're in a position in the spring to win it, you have a go for it. But I think we may struggle this year. And Nick has got an awesome squad. Yeah. But we've got a lot of young horses, a young team, and it's going to be a lot of fun, you know. But 
it's all about, you know, it's the same day you're running a successful business, looking after your owners and your staff and trying to do the best you can with the horses you've got and, and looking for the next generation of stars. And just a note on the jockey situation, obviously you had Ruby and yeah. Daryl's second jockey. Is that going to remain the same this season? You must be happy with the Yeah, it's a great arrangement. Daryl did really well last year, winning the National and having a great time at the end of the season. He's built his confidence, he's done well. Yeah. Ruby will you know, be fit and ready, ready to go from October. Um, nothing will change on that front. Um, and then, you know, we've got young Harry Durham yeah, sort oh, of slotting claim seven. James Cowley, he's a really good lad, claim seven. Harry Skelton works hard, you know, he'll get chances. Nick Schofield, Ryan Marn, you know, a lot of good jockeys yeah. in the squad, and that's what you need. So, Dad, beginning of a new season, you just must be itching to get going. Absolutely. It's always an exciting time about this time, get the get this owner's day out of the way, and then we start training them a bit harder and looking forward to running them. I know there's not much racing at the moment, and so it's quiet in that sense, but it must really take time getting to know sort of the youngsters, the new horses, mapping out their, the path they're going to take in the next season. Oh yeah, the older horses can be a bit easier to, to place, but it's the young horses that are coming along, you've got to see how good they are, and a lot of them you won't know how good they are until they run. What about, I mean, how many new horses have you got this year compared to normal? Have you got some really exciting prospects? Oh, hopefully we've got some nice young horses that that um, we paraded today, like Funny Star, Far West, 4-2 uh, and Wonderful Charm, to name but four. But yeah, yeah we've got probably 35, 40 new horses this year. So. Is that a bigger turnover compared to normal? I think if you, if you sat down, it's probably about the same as normal. And obviously last season you ran some really smart juveniles that ended up being quite lightly raced. I mean, I'm thinking sort of Uptalin and Dildar and youngsters like that, Ranjan, um, do these horses sort of take need the summer to acclimatise and grow up a bit? Oh, I think so, because most of them come off the flat as three-year-olds, so they can do quite well as three, four-year-olds, and then the next season's always a bit tough for them, but they actually look like they've done really well this year. Yeah, well I thought they all looked well, I mean did the summer, obviously it wasn't great weather really for them, it turned out, did, has that affected the way they've come back into work, has, has it sort of taken you a bit longer to get them at their best? or? Get them in, in their coat, I mean. I think they came in looking probably as bad as they've looked for a long time, but to be fair, within the seven weeks they've been in, they've turned round tenfold, and they look absolutely fantastic at the moment. Very fresh as well. A bit on the fresh side, one or two. <laughs> um, some, you raised some really nice youngsters, um, and you had some really smart chances going into both the Triumph Hurdle and the Champion Hurdle last season. Uh, two horses I really like, Dodging Bullets and Pearl Swan, who at a, at a sort of one point they seem like quite similar horses, but I'd say now on reflection one's a bit of a speed horse and one's a bit of a stayer. I mean, what do you have planned for them this season? Yeah, I think it's probably, it's probably a good thing that Dodging Bullets probably didn't win last year, so he's, he's technically still a novice, so, so you know, he'll, he'll, he'll be fine and go and have some fun with him. He strengthened up over the summer and, you know, do really well. Uh, Pulse one had a, s a slight injury at the end of last year, and he'll he'll probably race after Christmas. But you know he's an exciting horse, you know, to look forward to. What do you think Pulse one can go on and achieve? What, do you know what race is being aimed for? Or? Uh, it's quite hard to tell. I mean, those sort of horses you hope step up towards Champion Hurdle, hopefully. So, but you know, you may make might even make a chaser one day. Obviously, speaking of Champion Hurdle, you're going to have Zarkander back in action uh, this season. Are you happy with how he summers? Yeah, he, didn't, he doesn't do particularly well at grass, but he's done really well since he came in. To be fair to him, last year he was, he was a bit off, you know, in, in sort of March, February, March. You know, he had the bug and one thing and another. But he does look really sharp again this year, so, you know, we'll have a, we'll have a crack at the champion herd and see how we get on. I see this season you've got some really smart, well, loads of novice chasers. So I, I'd say it's more than usual going into this, no? Yeah, I think people have said that, but we always do run quite a few novices, so it's probably not a lot more than normal. Any that you're particularly looking forward to seeing run? Ah, I know that's hard, so many, but there's, there's, come on, you can give me one. There's so many. I mean, oh, the two God. lovely big horses in the front yard there, Reuben Cotter and Rocky Creek. I mean, with a bit of luck, they make great chasers. And obviously, you've brought some of the old favourites in. I mean, I'm thinking Big Bucks, Corto Star, Sanctuary. Are you happy with how they look? Yeah, I mean, they look stunning, and you can see how well they are just by the way they behaved. And Corto doesn't look a year older, does he? No, but he's... He's always been a bit like that. He's, he's never really looked old. Big bucks as well. I mean, I'd imagine obviously he'd go to defend his uh, world hurdle titles. I would imagine he'd go more or less the same route as last year. I would. And again, he's mad fresh as well. Mad again, as well. Look, they've been doing plenty of work. It's time we need to do a bit more. Well done.
you know, a lot of the horses uh, are actually doing, most of them are doing two canters every day and they look really well. Daryl, Ruby's not here, you're number one. No, no, not at all. No, Ruby's obviously number one, but obviously Ruby's got commitments in Ireland. So uh, look, it's nice to be here and see all the owners, and uh, you know, hope you have a great day. Yeah, obviously the parade, another fantastic team for going forward this season. You must be looking forward to getting on board some of the youngsters, especially. Yeah, really excited. He's um, he's bought an awful lot of uh, young horses. I think he's got about 32 young horses coming into the yard this year, and uh, you know, a lot of the older horses, um, you know, have been retired and. Uh, you know, you need new uh, flesh blood coming through, so uh, you know, very much looking forward to it again. And I mean, you know the horses quite well, I know you're very involved in the yard. Do you really notice a, a big sort of physical improvement in them after a summer break? Oh yeah, massively. You know, you got a lot of the, you know, the three-year-olds, four-year-olds and, and five-year-olds, and some of them even older than that, they, they mature and they get stronger. So, you know, you, you definitely know more about the, you know, the three- and four-year-olds, yeah. Any that you're particularly looking forward to getting on board? Um, there's a couple of nice um, horses there, you know, ready to go novice chasing, and uh, you know, even some of the juvenile look really well. So uh, I think they're all they're all quite exciting at this time of the year, aren't they? No, absolutely. Uh, is it too early at this stage to spot the real superstars, or is it just a case if you see the credentials but you don't know if they're actually going to? Yeah, be? yeah, no, exactly. I mean, there's you know they, they obviously look very well after coming in from the summer's break and uh, the new horses that he bought, but you never. You never know until they start doing, um, you know, serious pieces of work. They do nice bits of work and they seem to move well at this time of the year. But it's not until they start doing more serious pieces of work. Obviously, a horse you're very much associated with last season and the season before is Arcanda. Obviously, it was a bit of a frustrating time for him last season, wasn't it? But I mean, he looks a bigger and better horse this year, and hopefully, yeah, he, he's going to. He looks really well. Um, just seeing him out there, he's um, he's bucking around the place. Seems very happy with himself and. Uh, he had a great, you know, when he won that handicap at Newbury, it was great, and uh, just things didn't really fall right for him after that. Obviously, a massive highlight for you last season, must hopefully have been winning the John Smith Grand National. Uh, I mean, when did it sink in? Has it sunk in yet? Yeah, no, it's great. Look, it's a great um, team effort by everyone in Ditchit, and uh, look, I'm just very, very lucky to be a part of it. And uh, you know, it was a great day, and it's a day that um, I'll never ever forget. It must, be, it must have changed your life. I mean, it's such a public race, and you must be you're a bit of a household figure now. Has it changed? No, not really, no. Look, I just kind of keep nice and quiet and just tip away in my own little world, but uh, no, it's great.